Okay, starting off this week, guys, um, I, I want to just show you a couple of things um, that are going to help you get to the point where you're actually handing things in, right? Because what we do in the field of architecture is we create a product. That product is our drawings. It's our instruments of service. So um, you need to know how to take what you're doing in the digital world and pump it out on paper. Now, we're going to just do it, print it digitally to paper in PDF format, but it's the same principle. Um, so what you have to do in order to print things, um, and right now I don't have my uh, other floor plans, which I'll get to in a little bit, but anyway, um, let's, let's just go through the process of making a PDF so you guys know how to do it when you're ready. So you go to the R, and then you go to print. Um, there, oh, I want to point out, like, you could get confused by, like, exporting, and you can create CAD formats or DXFs or anything like that. When you're making PDFs, um, always do print. And uh, secondly, it's, it's generally not a good practice to print from Revit to a printer. Okay, just giving you a heads up on that. Yeah, uh, in the professional world, I've, I always, always, always print to PDF before I print to the printer. Okay, because then you have a record of what you printed. doesn't matter if there are duplicate records of stuff. You just always want to print it to a PDF. It's a much more stable file format. So um, switch your printer over to Adobe PDF. You guys won't have Bluebeam PDF. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, the thing you need to know about Revit is that there are two primary categories that you have to set. There's the page setup, and then there's the um, like print range, like how many views or sheets and all that other stuff. Um, so here on settings, um, let's go over that first because it's simpler. Um, what you need to know uh, prior to printing like full sets is that you can't print two different size sheets in one print. You can do some batch printing stuff with like add-ons and stuff, but if you have eight and a half by 11s or 11 by 17s mixed together, you can't print them all in one print. You have to do them separately. Um, but uh, anyway, what you got to do is modify the size. So right now, I think we set it up for a full, actually, what size did we do? I forget what our sheet size is. 30 by 42. Okay, so that's a full size sheet. So we're going to go to um, print, PDF, settings, um, switch this to an E1. E1 is 30 by 42. And then um, as a best practice, you want to always put zoom to 100% when you're printing a full size sheet. Like what, no, matter what the, no matter what the size of the sheet is, always do zoom to 100% because otherwise, you see this line at the outside of the sheet here on this title block? That line defines the edge of the page. So um, when you try to print it, uh, if you print it to fit to page, it actually reduces that to the margin of that printer. In this case, it's like a quarter inch or a half inch inside the outside of the page, which means it scales your drawing. So always do zoom 100%. <clears throat> um, over here, we have portrait and landscape. It's going to be landscape, obviously. Uh, hidden line views, vector and raster. You guys are familiar with those two terms, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know that this is going to be a vector drawing. Um, it might, so um, it might actually, because the drawing itself is a colored drawing, even if it's a colored floor plan, it might switch it to raster when it prints it. Um, but definitely for elevations, it likes to print it in raster, and it does that automatically. So it's good to just leave your default on vector, and then Revit will ask you, if it's okay to print it in raster when it needs to. Um, <clears throat> for the appearance, uh, appearance, uh, for the appearance, um, it doesn't really matter if you go like you know low, medium, or high. It's just going to be you know the default is high and it's okay. Colors, we definitely want to print color. Um, now here's something to note um, down here in the options. Okay, the ones that are default here are hide reference and work planes which obviously you don't want to see those dotted green lines all across your sheet, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Hide scope boxes and crop boundaries. Those are the boxes that you see when you're trying to reduce the size or extents of your view. It will automatically turn those off when it prints. The one that I want you to know is not turned off by default is hide unreferenced view tags. Okay, so that one, uh, at least in our office, we switch that to be a default off because that way if you have an elevation tag that you've not turned into an actual elevation, it just won't show up when it prints. Okay, so it cleans up your drawings a little bit from that kind of stuff. Um, so do me a favor here with this. Um, I'd like you to um, 
save it. Okay, so we're going to save this as a template. That's one of the cool things that Revit exporting or printing rather to PDF can do. So you can go to save as and you can call this, um, call it arc 30 by 42. Okay, so what that does is it creates this default setting right here in your Adobe PDF printer. Now, anytime you're printing a 30 by 42 sheet, you can go right to these settings and not have to reset anything anymore. Okay, and then once you're done that, um, hit OK. There, now you see that it'll show up down here in the bottom right, arc 30 by 42. Clear enough so far? Yeah. Yes. So when you save that, it saves, can you access that file from anywhere? Or it just saves within Revit? Uh, say, I believe it saves it to your printer, um, your printer driver. So like anytime you open Revit, that option is available to you. But you have to set it on your workstation. I don't know that they can be exported. Let me see. Yeah, maybe not. There might be a way to export it or something. Anyway, um, but it's an easy thing to, to change. Okay, now uh, I want to go over the print range. Um, print range is pretty simple. You can print the current window, which means whatever view or sheet I have open, okay? Um, and it will run it through the settings that you see in Arc 30 by 42. So if I did it, if I did current window on this sheet right now, it's going to print what you see on the, um, it's going to print the sheet that you are seeing right now. And, and process it the way we set it to. Um, the other one is visible portion of the current view. So if you only want to see like a small part of your floor plan, you can zoom into it and you can do like a quick print to eight and a half by 11 or something if you need to just quickly discuss it with someone. Not as commonly used. What is more commonly used is selected views and sheets. And this is a really powerful thing because you can set a set of drawings to refer to. Okay, so I'm going to go into select, and uh, right here you see that it defaults to sheets and views. Um, so uh, the two check boxes on the bottom, if I only want to see sheets, I can uncheck views. If I only want to see views, I can uncheck sheets. Um, but generally speaking, in our class, we're only going to print our sheets. So I almost always uncheck that as soon as I get into it. Um, so I'd like you to take uh, your, your first couple pages um, that we're actually going to use in our schematic design set, and we're going to save it as, a, as an SD set. So we have a cover page. We, have our, we don't have our site plan. So we're going to do first floor schematic, second floor schematic. You will add in your um, first floor um, plan and your second floor plan, okay? because that's going to be different than schematic. Um, but then we're also going to do our RCPs our roof plan, and our exterior elevations, and our building sections. Then go to save as. We're going to call this uh, SD set or schematic design set, however you want to name it. Okay, so now what that does is let's say I have all my sheets ready, they're ready to go, and that is my DD set. I can save that. I'm going to make this the DD set. That's design development. That's the next phase of drawing development. So now they both show up here. And if I need to go back and print just what was in my SD set, I click that and you'll see that those sheets are the only ones that get populated. Very useful tool in the office. Frequently neglected though. So just be careful of that. Okay, so SD set is on. I'm gonna hit okay. And then finally, right before we print anything, I just wanna point out this. Okay, this little file setting here. You can sort of default where these drawings go. Uh, it'll still ask you where you want to save it, which is fine. But um, as a default, once you switch it over to selected views and sheets, these two um, options become active, meaning you can choose between the two. And um, it defaults to creating separate files. Okay, I want to show you what the problem is with separate files. So I'm going to hit OK. And it says, all right, you're printing eight views and sheets as separate files. Do you wish to continue? So I'm going to say yes, because I definitely do. And then um, it goes through. It's sending page one. And what does it do? It sends page one, and then page two, and then page three, and then page four. 
And it's just a nightmare because it actually individually goes through each page and creates a new file for those. I'm actually trying to cancel it right now. And that's part of the nightmare is that it's a pain in the ass to cancel. Now, sometimes that's okay, but it really locks up your computer anytime you want to do that. So let me exit these. So what you can do instead is, uh, oh, okay. Oh, hang on a moment. All right. Um, so what you do instead is when you go to print, you go, uh, you set it up everything the same way you set it up, SD set, switch it to combine multiple files, and then uh, you can just replace it. So this one I'm going to put in my drive, Arcadia Residence PDF. And notice now it's just processing everything in the Revit environment. And when it's done, it's going to give me one PDF with all the pages that I included. Looks like our PDF printer is a little overly labored right now. All right, so now we have one PDF with all of our sheets right here. Clear? Questions? Okay, cool. So now you know how to create PDFs. Um, so let's talk about some of the requirements for, uh, for your midterm submittal. And then uh, we're going to do some extra things that we're going to start doing for the final. Brain, why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Okay.